Seven! 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 Where are you? Telegram for you, Mr. Copperson. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Helena! I say, Helena! What is it? Look at this. I thought tea out here would be nice. What is it? It's young Oliver. Has an appointment in Harley Street. Isn't arriving till midnight. I ask you. I'll get another chair. Oh. Yes, I'd do it if it wasn't for my leg. I mean, it's damned inconsiderate. Inconvenient. Meeting two trains, I ask you. Really, Richard, what does it matter? I'm the one who copes with this annual invasion of your brothers and sisters' brattlings. Anyway, Calypso can meet him, Lydia. She can drive now. Not my car. Any cream? No, dear, your nephews and nieces. At my car. Oliver's been wounded in Spain. I expect George and Sarah want to make sure he's all right. George is a fool. Why did he allow the boy to get mixed up with these dagos? I expect Oliver asked. He just went. They're lucky he's come back. The Turnbull son has been killed. At least he was fighting on the right side. You mean right or right? As against left. If you're going to start up again with that attitude, I refuse to discuss this scuffle in Spain. Where's that child, Sophie? Just scarf it off again. Shouldn't she be here for tea? Sophie? Coming! Coming, Uncle Richard! Well, this is lovely. How are you, Calypso? Sophie, darling! Hello, Aunt. Where's your brother? Oh, there you are, Walter. Isn't this air wonderful after London? Hop in, Polly. How's Uncle Richard? Yes, how's his leg? <laughs> Did you hear about Oliver? Oliver's coming on a late train, and nobody is to mention General Franco. Oh, Aunt Helena, you spoiled sport. <laughs> now, here, Sophie, sit on my knee. Nice to see you. Come and meet Ollie with me. Uh, may I meet him, Aunt? If you like, but Sophie should be in bed. Just this once. She's a grown child, she needs to sleep. She can see Oliver tomorrow. Mother spoke to Uncle Richard and he said Oliver had a near miss. And the bullet grazed the side of his head. What do you think of the war, Aunt? <laughs> Which one? Your uncle calls this scuffle in Spain or the coming one? The coming one. I shall join the Navy. You always sick, even in a dinghy. Well, I shall get into submarines. We can't be sick underwater. You're too young. I'm 18. I've left school. What about Oxford? No, I haven't got a place. Not like Oliver. Uncle George didn't at all like Oliver using his waiting year to go to Spain. He wanted him to learn German. He wouldn't have liked Germany. I was there at Easter. It was mild. All those sea kyles and Jews verboten. Filthy brown shirt was rude to me in Munich because I was wearing shorts. Let's not discuss politics or war. This may be our last summer holiday ever. Can't stop it anyhow. Your uncle doesn't think there will be a war, so please don't discuss it with him. Here we are. Suzanne Langland. Does it hurt? Does it hurt? No, it doesn't. I can take the dressing off tomorrow. Are you driving? Yes. Where's the car? Usual place. Do you think there'll be a pub open? Far too late. Have you taken to drink? Just want to delay arriving. Why? All the questions. There won't be many. Aunt Helena says we're not to talk about Spain or the war. How 
soon will it be, Oliver? How long have we got? They're all in bed at home. Can we stop on the cliff before we get to the house? Of course. Will this do? The terror run. Should we do it this year? Polly says this may be our last holiday. May I fuck you now? Now, at once. Calypso, I want to marry you. Well, can I? I'm a virgin. I'd have a baby. Darling Oliver, I can't marry you. I want to marry somebody rich. You know that. To keep you in the state to which you wish to be accustomed. Yes. I do love you, Oliver. You know that. Besides, you're only 19 and you have to go to Oxford. Oxford? Christ. Don't spoil our holiday. All right, we'll have the terror run. Oh, God, I'm tired. The smell. Can't tell you what it's like. What smell? Death. Bits of people, like Uncle Richard's missing leg. Imagine him hopping into bed with Helena. <laughs> Exactly, the poor sod. And we mock him. You changed. No. Just woken up. I'm sorry, Oliver. Good night. Which room am I in? The red room. Thanks. She did? She suggested it. But Aunt Helena said I must go to bed and see you in the morning. Are you cross? No. Uh, you're cold. Come here. I'll warm you. Let's warm each other. Ooh, get in with me. No, it doesn't. You smell of soup. Did you feel lonely? I was. Sometimes I do. They're a funny lot. Polly and Walter have got each other. But you and I are only as... And Calypso. Yes. And Calypso. Sophie, who was your father? No one knows. Mother must have. But she died when I was born. So, you've got Uncle Richard and Aunt Helena. Poor old Sophie. I don't mind that. Shh. Lie quiet. Perhaps we can hear the sea. Oliver, you're crying. Yes, I know. Just let me. May we 
ask the Floyd twins over? Of course. Telephone and ask them to lunch tomorrow. Such nice boys. Mm, extraordinary, considering their father's a conchy. I hear he's filled the rectory with Germans. Actually, the Erstweilers are Austrian. He played the organ beautifully on Sunday, even though it needs repairing. Playing for a supper. Well, there's a Jew, I'm told. Well, presumably that's why they're here. Are there any young Erstweilers, aren't? One. He's in a camp. Oh, hell. They must be worried stiff. Raise him up. Do him good. General Peacham says they're splendid places. It's all talk and propaganda about the Jews. What's propaganda? Forgive me coming down in a dressing gown, aunt. Good morning, uncle. Concentration camps. Oh. Any kedgery? I ate it. All of it? That wasn't much, sorry. That's all right. I'll eat an egg. I didn't think it worth dressing, as I intend to spend all day in the sun. Oliver's marvellously brown. We're going to ask the rectory twins to lunch tomorrow. If they're conscious like their father, I won't have them in my house. It's on Helena's house, Uncle. And Father says we should admire people like Mr. Floyer. If they'd been more like him in 1914, we'd all be living in a better world. <laughs> you want to stop it. He'll wreck the times if you tease him like that. In any case, I shall be out tomorrow, meeting the general at the golf club. I ask you. <laughs> <laughs> He's worse than ever. He doesn't want another war. Won't even admit it's coming. Here's Oliver. You're up early. That's not like you. I'm developing new habits, Aunt. Not all of them good. Been swimming in the curve of the twins. Is there any coffee left for us? Come in, twins. We were talking about you. We're going to ask you to lunch. Don't just stand there. Hello. Thanks. Good morning. Come and sit down, boys. Thank you. Thanks, Mrs. Cuthbertson. Uncle was suggesting you'll be conscious if there's a war. No, 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 Polly, yeah. not this war. One should fight for the Jews. Two should. Two will. Two are joining up at the end of the holidays. Oh, what in? Air, Air Force. Force. Long distance killing. Heard of Guernica? Of course we have. Picasso. Oh, I shall join the Navy just as soon as I can. Stop it, children. There may not be a war. It may not happen. All that over again. I can't bear it. Poor Aunt Helena. Uncle Richard's her second. She lost her first husband in the last war. We'll not face the fact that in all of us, even her, there's a person who's capable of killing. In you, and you, and... What difference does it make? There's going to be a war. Not a thing. Hot black company. Freshly drowned and fully packed. See, hot black coffee boy. Well, let's wait. Dark blend thirty seven. A blend of strength. General wants you to telephone. He's going to put the hounds down. He thought you ought to know, as you're on the committee. Good God. So he thinks there will be a war. 
Yes, my dear, he does. Helena. Helena, I'm useless. Nonsense, Richard. There'll be masses of things for you to do. ARP, things like that. Answering the telephone, I ask you. I've only one leg. You don't answer the telephone with your legs. Now, I must get on if Cook and I are to feed your army of relations. What about Sophie's knickers? There's going to be a war. What the hell do Sophie's knickers matter? <laughs> It's the full moon. Thinking of the terror run? Shall we let Sophie do it? She wants to. Why not? She practices first. You tell her. Fill her cup of happiness. <laughs> full moon ago, I was on the Ebro. One of my friends was killed. I haven't made a sound. Shot through the jugular. He and his friends burnt a priest. Made a bonfire and burnt him. Joke was, turned out he was one of us. Or had been. Joke? Atrocities are jokes. Can't survive otherwise. We all committed them, on both sides. You did? I stood by. Comes to the same thing. We're all drunk. There's an awful lot of waiting about. Fill the time, you burn, rape, pillage. Rape? Well, actually, she was more than willing. And I thought, oh, God, I may get clapped. Luckily, I didn't. Just the once? No, sweet. Every time I got the chance. So that's why you say we're all capable of killing. Look how far up the twins are. They've got Sophie with them. They won't drown her. Do you know, Ollie? Their father was a stretcher bearer in the war. Surely Bray. Never talked about it. He's not a war whore. Sophie, want to join the terror run? Come on out! What did you say? Want to join the terror run this year? Yes, please! You'll have to practice. I know the path. I know it better than any of you, only... There's that bit by the Coast Guard hut. It's safe there. Yes, I know. the whole way? Yes. We'll watch both ends. And the middle, and we'll see how you do it. Oh, thanks, Oliver. See what it is to give happiness? Will you run? Of course. You bet. When is it? Full moon. Whenever that is. Can I do the practice run soon? Will you watch? Of course. How about this afternoon? How'll that be? My nose getting red. Put a leaf on it. Clever. Find me one. Ready, steady, go! Go on, Sophie! Go on, Sophie! She's off. Walter's unleashed her. I wonder how the world will look from the air. Hello. Do you think they'll keep us together? Do you think they'd separate us? May have. My God, I hope not. Death could. Not us. <laughs> Sophie's going to look at his bits. He'll be around the headlands soon. Calypso and Oliver will see her in.
Sole. Even if I won't marry you, I'll sleep with you. Have you ever done it? Yes. Is it nice? Nice. Nice. I want to have you to myself. I'll wait. If there's a war, I'll sleep with you before you get killed. <laughs> That's what maidens do in books, and I'm a maiden. How you do carry on about your virginity. Virginity's nothing. You can lose it riding a bicycle. I never knew that. Mm. I must be careful. I'm going to get a bicycle in London. Pass of petrol will be rationed. And virginity not. How are you going to find your rich prince on a bicycle? It's so bourgeois. If you want something hard enough, you get it. And I want a rich husband very much. Calypso, don't. My love, my darling, I'll get rich. Completely filthy, bloody, awful, stinking rich. What's that? Somebody screamed. Sophie! Something's wrong. Sophie! Oh, Sophie! <laughs> Sophie! Oh. What is it? What happened? Are you hurt? What's the matter? Stop it, Sophie! Stop it! Sophie, stop it! You're hurting! Stop it! Pink! A man! Pink snake! Snake? Did it bite you? No. No. I'm all right. Sorry. Did I run fast? Must have been a record. I'll be even quicker by moonlight. You'll see. Oh. <laughs> What's up? Not going to tell us. Our country at harvest time a year ago, we were full of fear. We are still, but not for ourselves. We deserve to be safe entirely, not. Surely God will help us. <laughs> God with uns! Don't be ridiculous. Father says we mustn't lose faith in God, but we have already. We lost it when we slipped our cartilages at Raga. Both the same? We lost the match as well. We really had prayed. How old were you? Twelve. And you topped him, just like that? We never told Father. Your father is a saint. I say this in case there are saints. But personally, I doubt it. You go to father's church. You play the organ for it's him. It's the least I can do for your father and mother. Also, you boys are fortunate. We, we are. are. It'll be all right, Monica. You wait and see. We'll fight for you. We're going to join the Air Force. And get your son out of camp. In a casket. You know, they said you're a casket. Our son is a musician. You cannot play the piano in a casket. And uh, what is this game you play tonight? We race along the cliff path. Oliver called it the terror run because he's afraid of heights. <laughs> it's a bit scary in places, but even Sophie can do it now. We run by the light of the moon. Have you watch? Of course. The elders sit on the chamomile lawn and gossip while they time us. Hello! Isn't this terrific? We persuaded her to let us dine on the lawn. Yeah, no, it's fun, you can't. Ah, Isn't this fun? Come on. Lovely. Brilliant. Uncle Richard, this is Monica Asfider and Max Asfider. Ah. They're staying at the rectory. Sorry, in church, I believe. You know my wife, oh, Helena? So glad you could come. That was the first time I spoke to him. Sorry? Max, on the chamomile lawn, it has a special scent. I planted it just before the war. Oh. He wasn't famous then, was he? He was a refugee from Nazi Germany. The general said... The general? General Peacham, our neighbor. Oh. Loathed Jews, admired Hitler. 
master of hounds, a typical country gentleman, a good man, they do a lot of harm. My dear boy, must you drive quite so fast? I'd far rather be late for this funeral than early for my own. <sighs> Sorry, great aunt. This is the party we have every year. It may be the last. Every year, out of doors? No, never before. But tonight it seems safe. <laughs> and it's fun for the children. You could talk of fighting. Are they not men? I suppose they are. Men. Drinks! <laughs> you have a son in camp, I believe. My friend, the General, says they're doing your people a power of good. Wouldn't it hurt? Come on, everyone. We'll start dinner as soon as the sun sets. Drinks time! <laughs> <laughs> the moon! Wait, wait. Another toast to absent friends. Absent, absent friends. friends. Now for the terror run. Bags I go first. Be next. Will you time us, Uncle Richard? Got your torch? Yes. Same rules, I take it. Flush the torch when you start. Yes. Off you go then. Come on, twins. <laughs> Isn't Sophie rather young? She's running with the twins. She'll be all right. I can see no path. It must be dangerous. They all know it very well. If I had my leg, I'd think nothing of it. And where's the finish? Below us, out of sight. They shout when they reach it. I time them. And my word is final. Look, Oliver's starting. Oliver! Come it down! I've got an erection. I want to poke it into you. Have you never seen a man with an erection? No. So you really are intact, a, a virgin. I didn't believe you. Wouldn't it hurt? No. Think how you've got to stretch to let a baby out. You know how babies are born, don't you? Of course I do. I wish I I don't think you will. Come on, Sophie! Run faster! Come on, run, Sophie! Faster, faster! Come on! Well Make done! It. Sophie, home! David here! Paul here! Polly <laughs> here! Walter here! <laughs> Go 
God. I'm all in. Never again. Very probable. This time next year, where shall we all be? Under the sod. You'll be under the sea in your submarine. So I shall. Uncle Richard wants a dog. How do you know? He's missing old Spartacus. Helena won't be pleased. It's time we stopped always considering Aunt Helena. She gave him a pretty nasty look just before dinner. Well, he deserved it. Talking about the general. Down with all generals, especially Franco. What are you going to do, Calypso, if there's a war? Find a glamorous job with lots of rich men. I really think she means it. Won't you comfort the truth? I should do that, too. Impartially. Well, did Oliver win, as usual? It was your father on the telephone. He says his hospital is going to be evacuated from London. War. Oh. We should be going. Yes. Yes. We must thank you. Thank you both. It was charming. Full moon. Weather set fair. We should get through to Mother. Yes, use the telephone. And Sophie, you should go to bed. It's long past your bedtime. I don't think I can sleep yet. Can we talk? What about? The war. It's another false alarm. There isn't going to be a war. The hospitals and doctors are being evacuated. The children, too. Martin has been... Just another bloody exercise. The general says... The general is killing the hounds. He hasn't done it yet. Good God, Helena, there won't be a war. There won't be a party to this panicking and women's gossip. I can't talk to you. What do you mean? I can't. If you deny what is happening, how can I talk to you? All those children will be in it. All the horrors will happen again. Only worse. I can't stand. I can't stand your head in the sand attitude anymore. I'm going to London. London? What on earth for? Oh, what do you think? To do some shopping! Or changes everything. Does it? Of course it does. Now, will you marry me? I must have you if I'm to fight. You could get a safe job. I'm committed. Who to? Myself. You. I'm not asking you to fight. I didn't ask you to rush off to Spain in that silly way. Against fascism. The Nazis. Some of them are awfully nice. All that lot I met skiing. I love that lot in Kisbuel. Calypso, look at me. I'm serious. At least let's get engaged. No. A hundred times. I will comfort you, as they say. But marriage, no. I'd only make you unhappy. I'd risk that. I'm unhappy already. Oh, then. You've a taste of what I'd be like. <sighs> Gosh, I'm sleepy. Good night, Ollie. I'll hold you to the comfort bit. You do that. Sophie, you were listening. Yes. You shouldn't do that. I happen to be here. I often am. Go. 
Come down. I'll catch you. There you are. There. Thanks. Tie tide. War tide. I'm frightened. Are you? Yes. Very. Worse than the terror run. March. This is real. I'll run again in your honor. Funny little thing. You should be in bed. Let me stay a bit. I'm leaving, Sophie. When? Now. The sooner the better. There's nothing for me here. I'd comfort you. Will you come back? Promise. Perhaps. I can walk on ahead and get you some. The garages will be open by the time I get there. Are you sure? It's only a mile or two. You can leave your pack. Oh, uh, yes. Where are you going? London. Me too. I can drive you there. We can take turns. Are you staying with Mother? I hadn't thought. We should be glad to put you up. We can have breakfast at Truro and telephone her there. Good idea. Breakfast at the Red Lion. It was still there then. Bodmin Moor, Ilminster, Ilchester. It was the old A3303 in those days. When? When I drove up to London with Oliver, 40 years ago, more. Oliver Anstey? I've read his novels. Some of them. He was quite well known. He's still alive, very much so. There was one about the Civil War in Spain. Always seems to be looking for something, doesn't know what it is. You're very perceptive. So great aunt Sarah would have been his mother. Yes, she would. She was. Sarah! Be exhausted. I'm coming down. Sarah, I had to come up. Oh. I hope you don't mind. I can go to an hotel. Don't be absurd. George will be in soon. They've hustled him into the Admiralty. He's terribly busy. Overworked already. Darling, how's your forehead? I can't make up my mind in Cornwall. I never can. No, of course not. I understand. Sarah, I'm thinking of leaving Richard. Yes, I thought as much. Why did you marry him? We've always wondered. I don't really know. Could it have been because he had known Anthony before he was killed? Because I needed someone to look after? Or pity? because he was numbered with orphan Sophie. It wasn't love. Not love, of course. I'm so unused to cooking, but George insisted on a real Sunday lunch. Do you think it's doing all right? I expect so. He had a fine war record. Of course, that seemed to matter. I wish... Oh, I wish he wouldn't limp so obviously. Shall I do the greens? I know how. Yes, please. Be an angel. Here's a knife. I've suddenly realized why.
why I married Richard. Why? His leg. It was his leg. Oh, well, that's a good reason. Much better than if it was his leg. Oh, dear, isn't it awful how one says those things? What were you going to say? Well, I was going to say that was much better than if his leg had come between you. And, of course, it can't. No, poor dear. He always takes it off before we go to bed. the announcement. Chamberlain on the wireless. It's happened. We're at war. Bother, I meant to listen to that jackass. Oh, God. Oh, God. I thought you didn't believe in him anymore. No. If I really did, I wouldn't say it. I think. Delicious. I suppose this is the time to make my announcement. Join the army. When? We've got a commission. In the ranks. But I think having been in the OTC helped a bit. Actually, I fixed it up before I went down to Cornwall. What about Spain? They didn't ask, so I didn't tell them. You'd better buck up. I wonder where we go. Air Force? Try the Air Ministry. I expect there'll be posters. Our, Our country, country needs us. Where are you all staying in town? With me. Mother and father have gone to Godalming, where his hospital's been evacuated. They said Calypso could stay. And the train's told they're fixed up. What are you girls going to do now there's a war? Any ideas, Uncle George? Well, I can give you some introductions, I suppose. Actually, I've got a job. Fixed myself up months ago. That was glamour. Lucky you. Is it glamorous? Uh, I hardly think so. Just war office. Helena, are you all right up there? When are you coming home? Well, not at once. Uh, I've got some shopping. All kinds of things. Uh, There'll be shortages. I'm going to stock up. It's very inconvenient without the car. Well, ask the general to drive you. Helena. Helena, he put the hounds down. Can you believe? I ask you. You may be right about Hitler. The general thinks so, too. I mean, only a ranker could behave like that. Poor Richard. The hounds. Are you going back? Not yet. I have to think. What about Sophie? Sophie is what a lot of it's about. It's not altogether the leg. It's Sophie, too. Sarah, I don't like Sophie. Richard's half-sister's little accident. It was noble enough of you to take her on. Why don't you send her to school? I mean, a proper boarding school. In wartime? Helena, 
Life's not stopping, it's going on, war or not. Find the child a school, send her away, you'll both be much happier. Do you think so? Ask Polly, she was quite happy at her school. The Lipsos wouldn't do, she was expelled, flirting with the gardener. But Polly's was near Cambridge. There are such things as trains. Ask Polly and check with her mother. Make a list. Start with leg, then Sophie, then your shopping. You can cross out legs straight away as there's nothing you can do about it. You're rushing me. There is a rush. Being hated at Sophie's age isn't right. I never said I hated her. Not being liked, it comes to the same thing. I knew you'd help. <laughs> their daughter with them. Helena, Richard telephoned. He wants you to ring him back. Why? It's Sophie. What's happened? He won't or can't say. He sounds rather desperate. He must have told you. Helena, you know what he's like, and he was more than usually impossible. But I've actually been to Harrods to buy a puppy. I've sent it down to him. Where's Sophie? Got your present. Choose everything. It's eaten my best cardigan. Where is Sophie? In bed at the rectory. Why? What's happened? Won't say. The rectory offered. Seemed better for her to be with a woman. I can't do much with my leg. Monica Erstwhile sits with her. The doctor said to keep her quiet. But what happened, for God's sake? That's what she doesn't say. You better come too. Where are you going? To the rectory, of course. The rector found her on the cliff road. Thought she looked odd. Offered her a lift. She passed out of his car. Hasn't spoken since. Just lies there. Any signs? I mean, has he... Not interfered with. Nothing. Where she was, can't have seen anything of Penrose either. Penrose? Coast Guard chap. You know him. The army's wiring off the path. I ask you. Hitler's not going to invade up perpendicular cliffs. What about Penrose? Fell over. Drunk, I suppose, or suicide. Moody fellow, his wife says. Anyway, the army found him. Gives the police something to do. <laughs> I had my leg. Damn your leg! What happened to Sophie? Episode 2 of The Chamomile Lawn can be seen next...
measure you for one. Philips invents the compact disc, and music enters the digital age. Now Philips invents the compact disc interactive, and the digital age comes to video entertainment with interactive games, information, entertainment, and films, all with pure digital sound and stunning video images. Philips invents CDI, the ultimate machine for compact discs and amazing pictures. Philips invents for you. Cutting Edge is back on four, meeting the fire investigators ded dedicated to combat. Following the knockers, kids selling door to door and living off their wits. Challenging the farmyard gangers who diddle the dole. Can you run a national insurance number three for me, please? Seeing as I'm in the middle of a field. And in the first program, following the country's only rapid response unit for children with meningitis. I love you, little man. Cutting Edge returns to Channel 4 on Monday at 9. At five past ten tonight, the week's events are put into perspective with the incisive wit of Rory Bremner. Who else? First, wartime lives and loves remembered in part two of Mary Wesley's The Chamomile Lawn. Richard's told me about poor Sophie. Like to go up. Monica's with her. Uh, the room at the top on the left. Now, I'm afraid Mildred had to go out. Thank you. Hold on. Uh, I'll ask you. Ah, oh, so. Sophie, look who is here. Uncle Richard, I bought you a lot of clothes, too. There's lots going on. Polly's got a wardrobe. Calypso's looking for one. Walter's joined the Navy. Twins are trying for the Air Force. Oliver's got into the Army in the ranks, doesn't want to be an officer. Aunt Sarah and I thought you might like to go away to school. So I went and saw Polly's old school near Cambridge. I think you'll like it. There will be children of your own age. Games. And so on. Polly says you can stay with her on your way through London. I don't quite understand. Would you come in a moment? And, uh, What's going on? Police. What? Uh, well, yes, yes, of course. They're not English, are they, sir? Is it about the Coast Guard? The accident? I heard, so unfortunate. There must be some mistake. The earth fire. Twin shots. They have come. What is it? Why are they here? For us? They come for us? Don't be afraid, my child. These are English police, not the Gestapo. For you? We are to be interned as enemy aliens. Uh, we were warned. But that's totally absurd. You are Jews. You came here to escape from Hitler. But aliens, even so. Oh, God! No! They mustn't take you! Uncle Richard! Uncle Richard! Uncle Richard! Uncle Richard! Please, you must stop them! Write to the Times, write to the Prime Minister! Uncle Richard can do it. He'll make them listen to him. So he charged into battle. Sorry? Your father helped, of course. Oh, did he? A member of Parliament with 
good contacts and a very rich man. He had a lot of friends. Had to be rich or else your mother wouldn't have married him. Calypso always said she'd only marry a very rich man. What's that you're drinking, Gradon? Scotch. George, he is. Quite old enough to be her father. It was her father who introduced them. How can he have been so stupid? Well, I don't imagine it occurred to him. The man's supposed to be untouchable. How was her father to know that the advent of war made Hector determined to beget a Highland son and heir? But he's had a wife. Who couldn't or wouldn't oblige. Perhaps Hector can't. We shall see, shan't we? Aunt Helena. But couldn't Sophie get away? Uh, no, I left her at school. Oh, what a shame. I wanted her to see the Ritz. <laughs> Hector, this is my Aunt Helena from Cornwall. She's staying with Aunt Sarah and Uncle George. I'm sorry, Richard couldn't manage it. Ah, uh, yes, I find I knew your husband in the last war. He reminded me in a letter I had recently. I've never seen anyone look so smart. Have you, Polly? Well, you know what Calypso always said, didn't you, Walter? What's that? She's married a rich man. Well, somebody's got to pay for all this. Her parents haven't got a penny. I should think Uncle John is jolly grateful. But look, there's Oliver. I never thought he'd come. Darling Ollie, how prickly you are. Is that him? It mustn't be horrible. Am I still to get my comforts? Oh, that. <laughs> I may claim them soon. I'm hoping to get to Finland. Well, Hector says that's all collapsing. There'll be other campaigns. Why be in such a hurry? Because I am. So you'd better buck up, too. Hector! Hello, old sir. Hello, Oliver. Come over here and see Polly and the twins. Oh, leave me to the booze. I want to get filthy drunk. Oh. That was Oliver. I'd say he was halfway to his goal already. Come and meet some of my friends from the house. We even you were young once. Never mind. I'll keep my word if you'll keep yours. She's quite a girl, your sister. Not stupid. That drop at the war office is pretty hush hush. Yeah. Very shush shush. Pretty old Sophie couldn't make it. That was the most unhappy wedding I've ever been to. Oh, my poor Oliver. Lucky escape, if you ask me. I don't give much for Hector's chances. I mean, what sort of idiot would choose to spend his wedding night on the sleeper to Inverness? I wonder what's going on. The night of the long knives by the bride's looks. Clever you. Did appreciate that. I can't tell you how much I was dreading it. I thought as much. That's why I booked this room. It's quite a surprise. And the Savoy, too. Do you know the best part? No. Tell me. Finding a telephone by the lavatory. Oh. They think of everything. Would you like some oysters? In the middle of the night. Why not? We'll build up our strength for your highlands. 
I'm dreading them, too. Wait till you see them. All right, I will. They'd better be good. <laughs> Anyone else? Bugger it. Hello? It's Oliver. Yes, I'm back in London for the night. Any chance of seeing you? I think my parents are decamped to Bath. There's no one here. We're going out. You just caught us. Hector's waiting on the doorstep. We're due at a party. It's not your sort of party. Sorry. Another time, give us some notice. There's so many parties. London's great fun. No, I'm sure your camp isn't. Why don't you try Polly? She may be at home. Coming, Hector. Coming. Sophie, what are you doing here? I thought you were at school. I've got the week off because I've had German measles. Polly's out with the twins. Come in. Don't let the ice indoors. You've grown. Do you think I could have a bath? Of course. Anything to drink? There's some gin in the dresser. I was just going to have my supper. The twins are up for the night. I'll take you out of supper. Well, I've had a bath. Any news from Cornwall? What's happened to the earth spiders? Uncle Richard's trying to get them out. I had a letter from Monica in the camp. It was censored. Isn't it stupid? Uh, the whole bloody war is stupid. Boring, too. Never even got to Finland before they packed it in. Where shall we have dinner? Anywhere. I'll take you to the Savoy. It's really good. I've never been anywhere in London. My father used to give me lunch here at half terms. Why didn't you go back to Cornwall? Aunt Helena said it was too far for such a short time. Do you mind? Not really. Not like Cornwall? Not a bit. What's it like being a soldier? Hell? No. More like purgatory without the benefits. You went to Calypso's wedding. Aunt Helena didn't want me to miss school. I see. Drink up. I don't like it much, but it makes me feel warm. I ran the terror run. What? It's wired off now, but I ran it the day before they put the wire along to stop the Germans landing. Oh, the terror run. I'd forgotten. <laughs> What's the matter? I met. I mean, I saw. Yes? I met the rector. He was very kind and took me home. Oh, no. 
look, there's Calypso. Bloody, bloody bitch. London's great fun. How long have you known she was there, Sophie? I saw her when we came in. I'm not a bloody bitch. I meant Calypso, not you. So, end of story. Comforts for you, old chap. said the police weren't like the Gestapo when they came to fetch Max and her. I hope they get out soon. Sophie, you're freezing. Why didn't you say? I'm all right. Come on, we must get back to Polly's. We never left a note. She'll think you've vanished. She's out with David and Paul. They may be back by now. Cold fish. Make yourself some cocoa. How's it going, Oliver? Going nowhere. I'm in camp and bloody bored and cold. You look fine. I think I'm doing something useful. Secret? Not so you'd notice. <laughs> well, it is really. We're drinking gin. Thanks. We saw Calypso. Ah. You'd rather gone off her. She's become rather grand. Other fish to fry. Yeah, she was dining with one tonight. Said she was going out with Hector when I telephoned. He's in the House of Commons most nights. She can't be expected to sit at home alone. Down in Cornwall, you two used to drool over her. You did too. She liked you better than us. Or Walter. I expect she prefers officers. Well, you'll get commissions when you fly. Where are you stationed? Near Cambridge. Cambridge. We're escorting Sophie back to school tomorrow. And we tried to get into bombers, but they're training us for fighters. We could have been together in bombers, we thought, in our innocence. Uh, well, I'm still square bashing. God. My little brother's full of grumbles, too. They won't have him in submarines. He says the Navy are sadists and he'll spend the war being seasick. <laughs> I've got to work tomorrow. I'm off to bed. If I'm gone in the morning, don't worry. Come again whenever you like. There's plenty of room. I'm in Mum and Dad's room for the phone. You can have Walter's. And I'm in hers. Oh, good Lord, Uncle Richard! What are you doing here? Looking for shelter. <laughs> Got lost at the bloody blackout. Well, there was a blackout for with a full moon. I ask you. We're in the kitchen. Polly's gone to bed. Went to your house, found it all shut up. Nobody there. I think they're house hunting in Bath. My father's department's been evacuated. Come down and have a drink or something. The twins are here. Ah. And Sophie. Ah, you two. Which is which? Can't tell you apart. <laughs> Neither can Polly. What are you doing here? No, don't tell me. Half term. German measles, Uncle Richard. Why are you in London? Enemy aliens. 
I ask you. It's ridiculous. Cut your bloody red tape, I said, and let them out. The rector and I will take care of them. Your father wrote a letter. What's this? Gin. Oh, well. It's all you've got. Been at the home office all bloody afternoon. Absolute huns. Can't tell a simple Austrian violinist he plays the organ in your father's church from an enemy agent. Passed me from one buffoon to the other. No good for my leg. Saw six of the buggers. I ask you, got absolutely bloody nowhere. Will you all laugh at <laughs> Nothing, sir. Well, where was I? Oh, yes. Nowhere. Mm. So, I went along to the House of Commons and saw that chap Calypso married and two of his friends. Good bar they've got there, by the way, and bingo! What do you think? This fellow, member for somewhere or other, tells me the erstwhileers are being released and arriving in London the day after tomorrow. <laughs> Uncle Rich! And none of those buggers sitting on their asses had even heard. <laughs> Any more of that gin? You can't park there. <laughs> You can with a Nissan. You can't have a small car, it's good on the open road. You can with a Nissan. Expect a salute with ABS anti lock brakes as standard for the round 11 Titan. <laughs> Come with an S, son. You can't have a Nissan that makes people's jaws drop. Condensed cream of mushroom soup tastes rich and delicious on its own. But because Campbell's is the only concentrated soup, you can use it to make tasty meals, like saucy sausages and onion. There's a quick and easy recipe on every can. Campbell's makes the soup that makes a meal. never been an Esso shop like this before. At our very latest Esso snack and shops, you can tuck into freshly fried chips, cool down with a freshly frozen low-fat yogurt, load up with freshly cooked pizzas and pastries, and always be sure of fresh surprises and a warm welcome all day long. Esso Snack and Shop, a new generation of shop. It's a hair that feels great every time. New moisture enriched finesse mousse. Great feel and a touch of finesse. An SOS at HQ revealed a VIP with an OB tucking into a baked potato without HP. Everything's okay with HP. Try and relax. I've warmed my hands. I've always thought to touching patients with cold hands, the height of cruelty. How's that? Feel comfortable? Will it stay in? Oh, goodness, yes. Now, try it for yourself. I don't want you going home and panicking. I don't think I'll panic. I expect not. How old did you say you are? Nineteen. Nineteen. 
that right? Perfect. Are your parents pleased? I haven't told them yet. My father's a doctor. His hospital's been evacuated and my mother's with him. Well, I hope you'll both be very happy. You seem the sort of girl who knows her own mind. I am. The war shouldn't be allowed to destroy values. That's my only bromide. I'm hanging on to my values. The wonderful wizard of Oz. Here he is, a wizard of a whiz, if ever a wizard of Oz. If ever, oh, ever a wizard of Oz, the wizard of Oz is one because, because. You sound because very cheerful, Ma. Rather a funny song for going to a funeral. Oh, I don't know. He was a wizard in his way. A wizard of the bow, if you like. Not only the bow, by some reports. I was thinking of the day I went to see that film and then came home and fell at the great Uncle Richard's leg. Sam! Oh, what's that? Uncle Richard, I fell over your leg. What are you doing here? Arrived last night. What time is it? Seven-ish. Ah. Uh, I'll be up for breakfast. Supper. It's seven in the evening. We were celebrating. I remember that. I heard Oliver and the twins make an awful noise. I suppose oh. they were putting you to bed. You were all asleep when I went out. I feel woeful. Why don't you have a bath? There's a razor of father's somewhere. Then come down and have some supper. I live in the kitchen nowadays. Mm. Mm. and get bombed. <laughs> I've just laddered my stockings, tripping over the curb. That's not like you. Come in. What's the matter? What's up? Nothing. Are you expecting somebody? I don't want to butt in. It's only Uncle Richard. He's in London, trying to get the earth filers out from the Isle of Man. And with the hell of a hangover. <laughs> I only just found him, after the twins and Oliver put him to bed last night. Are they here now? No. They had to take Sophie back to school on their way to their station. Um, and Oliver had to go back to camp. Wish I'd seen them all. The twins did come one evening, but I was doing something else. Polly, I've got to tell somebody. Fire away. Why not stay for supper? Oh, hell, hang on. Hello? What? Oh, Aunt Helena. Yes, it's me, Polly. Yes, Uncle Richard's here. I think he's just coming down. Hold on a sec. It's Aunt Helena for you. Ah. Yes. Yes, that's right, I'm here. What? Who? That's ridiculous. They telephoned the rector. Why not me? I'm the one who's made all the running. Well, not running. Not with my leg. Polly fell over it. What? Oh, all right, I'll come home then. Yes, tonight if you want. I could catch... Hello? You there? Helena? Gosh, damn it. Cut off. The erstwhile aren't coming out till tomorrow week and are travelling via Bristol. I ask you. Ah. Helena seems to want me to come home. Says she didn't know where I'd got to. I suppose I'd better catch the night train. 
You'll just have time for supper. Calypso's staying too. I can take you to Paddington, Uncle Richard. I've got Hector's car outside. Oh. What about what you were going to tell me? Oh, that was nothing. Nothing important, anyway. I think there's one in here, Uncle Richard. Oh, no, it's full. No, no, oh, oh, we can make some Oh, thanks awfully. It's for my uncle. He's lost a leg. He can't possibly stand all the way to Penzance. Take mine, sir. Oh. oh, thank you so much. How kind. Lost in the last show. Wouldn't trouble you, except for my leg. Goodbye, Uncle Richard. I've got to go. Don't you dare give him my address. Thanks so much. Perhaps we'll meet in London sometime. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. I thought you were visiting your constituency. I decided to go tomorrow instead. Oh. I wanted to say I'm sorry. Do you behave like that often? Not very often. I was drunk. So I can take it you'll never hit me when you're sober. Darling, I'm sorry. I've said I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? No. Why didn't you warn me? If I had, you wouldn't have married me. Oh, yes, I would. Why? For your money. Bitch. No, it's my fault. Mine too now. I've been putting Uncle Richard on the night train. Oh, Lord. The bloody binge started with him. I'm cold. I'm tired. It won't happen again. Oh, yes, it will. I may be rather young, but I know it happens again and again. Don't leave me. Calypso, I love you. I don't care if you do or not. I don't think I'm the sort of girl who can love. I married you for your money and to give you an heir. That's the deal, whatever way you wrap it up. I'll keep my word and hope you won't get drunk too often. I also hope your bloody heir isn't a sod like you. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is it? Oh, Hector. I left your car at Paddington. I took Uncle Richard. They came home my underground. I forgot. It's my platform one. Your precious car. And you left the keys in the ignition, I suppose. Yes, I did. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You're, you're so funny. And I love you. Not tonight. I couldn't. I'm the most diabolical hangover. And bad conscience. That too. You're driving too fast again. I wanted to ask, when my mother had her stroke last year, she said something I didn't understand. Calypso. To do with great uncle Richard, I think she said, if she hadn't given him a lift one night, she could have walked out on my father. So I'd never have been born. Do you know when that was? <laughs> ah, Richard, the peacemaker, absolute tosh. He was rambling. Quite recovered now. Improved. Calypso's face was too perfect. Now it's a bit lopsided. She looks human. Still, rather an odd thing to say. Calypso, it's Oliver. Can you have dinner with me? Tonight. Please, I'm going away. I'll tell you when I see you. I'm off to Norway. Oh, my God. Hector says it's ill-fated. Why you? I've been given a commission. But you said you never would. No commission, no action. So I take it. Where shall we go? Hector's in the house. Won't be back till late. 
Bar clip? Fine, I'll dress. No, don't waste time. Talk to me while I tidy then. You do live in style. Nice, isn't it? I'm changing the house quite a lot. Hector doesn't mind so long as I don't interfere in Scotland. What's that like? Antlers and kilts. It's Hector's place. Polly's got a bigger one. Bigger what? Bigger bed. She's moved into a mum's room. Hurry up, Calypso. I'm starving. I'll just have to telephone. Someone I promised to have dinner with tonight. Like that sailor. <laughs> he was only in London for the night. Did you take out Sophie Folk Demir? I bet she enjoyed it. Sophie's going to be a beauty. She adores you. She loves us all because we're so much older. We represent glamour. <laughs> When do you go to Norway? If I knew, I wouldn't be allowed to tell you. I'm leaving London at dawn. I see. What about my comforts? I swore you'd sleep with me. Did I? You know you did. I'm off to war. <laughs> I keep my promises. Where can we go? Well, not your house. Where then? Mine. My parents are away. You can go there. All right. Hell, it's empty. You've moved the furniture. You knew. Aunt Sarah told me. They've taken a house in Bath. You bloody bitch. I'll fuck you on the floor. Not in this coat, you won't. Hector would kill me. Damn and blast, Hector. Come on. They must have left something. A sofa, a bed, a carpet. Thing. I'm randy as hell. I'm not. I'm cold. You promised. I know I did. Come on, Molly, have some sense. Not a tuppenny upright. Let's go to Polly's. See if she's in. Polly's out. What about a hotel? I haven't got enough money. I've got money. I don't want your rich husband's money. My sofa? Your husband will be back. Probably, but he'll be asleep. You used to smell of chamomile. And salt. Oh, Ollie, dear Ollie, that was so long ago. Last August. I'll walk you home. I'm not Randy anymore. Here's a secret every woman will want to know. New Superlook Secrets from Playtex with a hidden panel that smooths and flattens your tummy in all the right places. New Superlook Secrets from Playtex. The secret is yours. Some sources of vitamin E you slice. Some you grind. This one you spread. Flora, a good source of vitamin E. There's one.
unbuilt society that's helped more people prepare for their future than any other. In fact, by providing saving schemes, bank accounts, and the chance to buy their first home, we've already helped millions of people get to where they want to go. Get a little extra help from the Halifax. this evening. Your chicken fajitas. And now, live in concert, Tony Blackburn. Recharge your batteries. We charge just 53.50 per room per night at 40 post house. <laughs> Enjoy Britain's warmest welcome. Call 0345 40 40 40. Joe 306 drives the imagination. For a 24 hour test drive, free call 0500 306 306 now. Anything about the flexible call chargers on the new digital mobile phones? Oh, yes, sir. That'll be the new Metro Digital Service, sir. With a variable tariff for local use, sir. We'll also That's charge good. you accordingly, sir. Yeah, Anywhere thanks a lot. Trader. Drive on, mate. Vodafone Digital. Top brass savings on mobile phone calls. dinner with Oliver. He's off to Norway. Poor devil. It's a crazy mission. He's got a commission. So have I. What? Put your light down. You're letting it cool him. Oh. Snuggle up. What did you say? Got a commission. Came through today. In the guards. Can't leave it all to the young boys. It's a nice surprise for you. Oh, no. The smell of cigars. I hate cigars. Aren't you pleased? No, I'm not. You'll go away. Oh, you'll get used to it, sweetie. Uh, I'm 44. I don't suppose they'll let me do anything dangerous. If I'm sent overseas, I'll send you out to Scotland where you'll be safe. Oh, no, you won't. I'm staying here, whatever happens fond of you. How nice and warm this is. Oh, poor Ollie. <laughs> I object to having them. Bang, bang, bang! No, of course. Go to the farmer's garden. Oh, children, please, go and play around the back. I'm trying to talk to Mrs. Cuthbertson. We loved having Max and Monica at the rectory, but we're just bursting at the seams now with our evacuees. No, you couldn't possibly have the earth's virus back. I suppose I'm not really used to strangers in the house. Another pair of hands can be useful. Monica's never idle. That's part of the trouble. And with both your maids off to war work? Not cook yet, thank goodness. Oh, cook will never go, I'm sure. I can't be quite certain. <laughs> thank you for the bramble jelly. I know Richard loves it. You know, he's working for Max. Richard? Mm. Bought a typewriter to help him compose all Max's letters. The Isle of Man turned out to be rather useful. Max made contact with other musicians in the camp, and I was hoping to find some work with orchestras here. 
I must confess, I hadn't quite realized how successful Max was in Vienna. Yes, I'm told he was. What's even more surprising, Richard turns out to be quite knowledgeable about music, too. But <laughs> you're tone deaf. God moves in a mysterious way. He certainly does. or it was bad. Richard with his leg cannot manage it. You smell these? Wild garlic. It will do for salads. I find it in the woods. In the camp? There was this man who has a restaurant in Soho. Now he is free. I get him to send us a clove of real garlic and show you how to go. Oh, grow. I don't if think. If we grow herbs and garlic, darling, we will transform the rations. Uh, Richard won't eat garlic. He hates it. Tell him he will not know. I will tell Cook. Do you think that wise? Helena, she must learn. I find her throwing away sour milk. Well, if it was sour, she must make cheese. She must use it for cooking. I don't want to upset her. All right, daughter. I am going to the woods. Later, we find other things. Mushrooms, wild berries, fungi. Listen. You hear Max is playing? This is Bach. Also, we make yogurt. Yogurt? It is made from germs. It is a food. Bloody rates again? Oh! Max! One for you. Uh, it'll be the same. We thank you for your inquiry. Well? from Barbaroli. I say! Uh, bingo! What is it? I have an engagement. Menu in is cancelled. Manchester, the Halle. What to perform? The Beethoven. I ask you. When, Max? <laughs> Next Thursday. You must rehearse. You have no piano for me to accompany? No. The General has a grand. I'll tell the friend the General. Coming in now, Sarah. Up, up. Are you still there? Yes, it is. My drawing room is a music studio. Monica's taken over everything. And worst of all, Cook's given in her notice after nearly 20 years. Birmingham, she says, to work in a factory, would you believe? She claims it's the money, but really, of course, it's Monica. You should be thankful. I wish I had some Erstweilers. Clearly, you haven't heard the news, or you wouldn't bother me with trivialities. The Germans have invaded Holland and Belgium. On the wireless. George and I are worried stiff. What's happening to my poor Oliver in Norway? We've had no news at all. Calypso? Well, I suppose Hector may have heard something. No, Aunt Sam, I'm afraid he hasn't. He knows no more than you. I think they're pulling out. You could try Polly. She works in an office that's in the know. Well, yes, I did get a letter. Nothing much. It was censored. He just said this is worse than the terror run. That game we used to play. I'm sure he'll be back safe. Yes, I will. Our six minutes are up. Goodbye, Aunt Sarah. It's no good asking me. I don't know much. And if I did, I couldn't tell you. Calypso. Come round and have supper. 
Are you doing anything? I've got a friend here who wants to meet you. Of course you'd like him. Light entertainment, just the job. There you are. She's coming. I promised you'd meet her, didn't I? You did. Mind you're nice to her. I always am, surely. You can take her home after supper. I want an early night. But Polly, I... But Polly's had enough, so off you go. Are you giving me my congé? Yes. That was the arrangement. It's worked very well, thanks a million and all that. You're a cold-blooded bitch. No. Just practical. You've used me. Yes, I have. You've been an investment, a tutor. I learned a lot. You've behaved like a young man in a brothel. And why not? Why not? Was Tony Wood a friend of yours or Calypso's? Both, in the end. Isn't he homosexual? Not at the time. Ambidextrous. I should have thought, in the war with the bombing and all that, there wasn't much time for all this private life. Then you couldn't be more wrong. We lived intensely, did things we never would have done. It was a very happy time. Happy? <laughs> Surprised. I saw. I've been married so long to Richard. I suppose I thought I was past that sort of thing. You are an idiot, my <laughs> Helena. <laughs> Quite probably. <laughs> oh. My legs get a bit of needle. <laughs> Why did it happen? Why? At the cove, you were staring out to see. Were you thinking of your son in that concentration camp? Not Pauli then. I thought of Paris. The Nazis would be in Paris. And then made love to me. I make love when I'm sad. Also when I'm happy. Most times I just make love. <laughs> Give us a kiss. You're not to go home to Cornwall. You're to spend half term with us. Oh, goody, where? With Polly. We're building her a shelter. You can help. Any news of Oliver? She hasn't noticed. She hasn't noticed our elevation. Have you? You look just the same. <laughs> oh, I see your officers. How grand. What else? Wings. Oh, gosh, you've got wings. Pilot officers with wings on leave. We've been home, and we're three days in London before our posting. So, where's this shelter you built for Polly? That's a surprise. Come on. <laughs> a bit further yet. I can smell paint. We had a bit of a rush to finish before you came home. <laughs> oh. Oh. Now. We wanted you to sleep in peace. Even through air raids. What, what do, do you think? think? Oh, twins. You darlings. I love it. And I love you. We must have you safe. And Sophie helped. I went to Harrods and bought the ribbons. Will there be many raids now? Hello? Walter! Christ almighty, what's this ghastly smell of paint? I thought you were in Portsmouth. I was. Mm, I'm on my way to Plymouth. Another bloody destroyer. 
God rot the Admiralty, sadistic bastards. Hello, you lot. Hello, Hello Walter. Walter. Any chance of a bed? It's your home as well as mine. I just keep meeting people who've stayed the night. Hello? Could I speak to Calypso? Oliver! We all think you're dead. It's been months. It's not a sexy voice. I'm very ill. Tonsillitis. Nearly dead. Oh, Ollie, I can't. I'm in bed. Hector's had to go to a party without me. Bugger the doctor. Meet you in half an hour at the Bartley. I've been in bed, too. Wounded? Oh, it's right. Retreating, as they call running away, is very tiring. If you hadn't been in Norway, you might have been retreating in France. Lots got back. Hector was sent down to Dover to meet them. Oh, how nice. Being met by Hector would be the last straw. Now, now. Always forgotten. All I hear about is heroic Dunkirk. Was Walter there? Oh, he says he was. He said he hadn't been sick because it was so calm. He's obsessed with seasickness. Wasn't he terrified by the bombing? Polly was just glad he was all right. Like me. More cheerful than you. Are you shell-shocked? <laughs> Only demoralized. I've got a room in Half Moon Street. Let's go there for a sex shock. Now? Yes. I'm not hungry. You're not eating anything either. I can't swallow. Well, that won't prevent oh, Oliver, I can't. I'm infectious. Try not to be silly. Stop prevaricating. Have you told your mother you're back? Not yet. You must. She's in agonies of anxiety. I will, soon. Do it now. Then I'll come to your room. I hope you don't mind. It's the only room I could find at such short notice. I'm looking forward to this. Come on, my love, hurry up. Sim, stop. Let me. Look down, you fool, pull it up and start again. I believe you're doing this on purpose. No, I'm not. Oh, God, that's me! Now. Let me in, sir. There's a raid. I know. I can hear. It's the bloody landlady. I've got to see the blackouts all right. It is. I must see for myself and in the bathroom. Let me in. Our warden's a terror. I was just going to bed. Are you alone? I thought I heard voices. I don't allow my lodgers to bring ladies in. Just fix the blackout and push off. Aren't you going to take cover? No. All well now? Had a good peek round? You didn't think to pull that blind down. You sure there hasn't been no one? Thank you very much. Can't imagine where the war would be without you. Have a good read then. Good night. For God's sake, Calypso, what do you want to hide in there for? It's Hector. That was my landlady. I have to be careful because of Hector. If you find out, he'll kill me. Look at my hair. Goodness, I feel ill. This awful throat. Will you take me home, Ollie, please? I don't think I can be much comfort. I really can't. You do sound a bit hoarse now I come to listen. <laughs> <laughs>